尊敬的主席、第热界的各位同仁、各位朋友，大家好，我是中国国家地热能中心主任曹耀峰。去年十一月，带着十四亿中国人民对地热的深厚感情，与对世界地热大会的殷切期盼，我们中国代表团。从北京飞到春末夏初的奥克兰，参加世界地热大会二零二三年申办城市竞选。最终，我们非常荣幸的获得了主办权。这是自一九九五年以来，历史悠久而又充满活力的中国。首次迎来地热领域规模最大的国际盛会。当下，人类正经历十分严重的全球公共卫生突发事件，突如其来的新冠疫情，极大影响了人们正常的工作与生活次序。正是因此原因。我们只能先采用视频形式，向全球地热界的朋友们发出诚挚的邀请。虽然无法面对面的交流，但希望我们的热情可以透过屏幕传递给每一位听众，共同促成二零二三年的北京之约。我的演讲共分三个部分。首先介绍蓬勃发展、日新月异的中国，然后介绍中国地热产业发展现状与良好态势。最后，介绍我们为保障大会安全顺利召开所开展的前期工作，并就如何将2023。世界地热大会办成一届特色鲜明、令人难忘的国际盛会，提出初步设想。Well, okay, let's enter the chapter one. And here, China, one of the four ancient civilizations, has long history. Chinese history can be traced back to 5,000 years ago. It boasts a colorful and a profound Chinese culture, which is profound, splendid, diverse, and unique. China has a vast and a varied geographic expanse, giving birth to 9.6 million square kilometers of land. The majestic Taihang and Qinling Mountains, the endless Yellow River, and the Yangtze River. China. Has a large population and is the largest developing country in the world, with 56 ethnic minorities and 1.4 billion hardworking and wise people. In the modern China, the Chinese government is open and inclusive. The whole society is kind and friendly. The Chinese people are warm and hospitable. China, as the second largest economy. The rapid economic development and continuous progress in science and technology, and a more comfortable and convenient people's lives. However, with the rapid economic and social development, and the continuous improvement of people's living standards, China has become one of the major energy production and consumption countries. Well, the whole country. Has been going through the rapid energy structural transition. Through the rapid economic development, rising energy consumption, and a high proportion of fossil energy in China, has put tremendous pressure on the environment. Therefore, China needs a new energy revolution, that is, to develop renewable energy. First of all, China. Should develop a new economy, 
the China's digital economy reached 4.9 trillion U.S. dollars, accounting for 35 percent of the GDP in 2019. The digital economy has become the new engine for China's economic growth. Besides the new economy, China also should develop low-carbon railway transportation. There are two modes of development. First one, railway. The mileage of China's railway reached 139,800 kilometer. The number of passengers was 3.66 billion in 2019. The energy consumption and the pollutant emissions per unit of freight turnover of the railway are only 15% and 8% of the highway. The other one is about high-speed rail. The high-speed rail is powered by electricity and is one of the eco-friendly transportation. The mileage of China's high-speed rail reached 35,000 kilometer by 2019, ranking first in the world. The number of passengers reached up to 2.29 billion. Uh, thanks to the development of the new energy, you know, China also develops new energy vehicles. In 2014, the development of new energy vehicles became one of China's most important development goals. China has been the world's largest producer and a mark for new energy vehicles for four consecutive years. As of 2019, the number of China's new energy vehicles ownership has reached 3.81 million, ranking first in the world. And besides, China also develops the renewable energy. In recent years, driven by China's market demand and a policy guidance, China has entered the stage of a skill development of a renewable energy industry and have become one of the world's largest renewable energy utilization countries. The Chinese government also launched the, the program to support clean heating in northern China. Now, in order to make the sky bluer and the water cleaner, Chinese governments give support funds of geothermal energy and other clean energy heating. In 2019, government special fund for air pollution prevention about 40.2 billion yuan equals to 5.6 billion US dollar. The fund includes the Winter Clean Heating Pilot Project funds, which provided to 43 cities in northern China. The municipalities, the provincial capital cities, the prefecture level cities, and the Fenway Plan City directly allocated 1 billion yuan, 700 million yuan, 500 million yuan, and 300 million yuan annually, a total of 15.2 million yuan. From this map of China, you can say the part circled in color yellow, the range of pilot city for winter clean heating in northern China. That is the core area that China has been focusing on. And well, and like what I said before, now China is going through the energy structural transition which also has achieved initial success. After continuous exploration and efforts, China's total coal consumption has been steadily declining. The proportion of coal in the consumption structure has shown a downward trend, and the transformation of the energy structure has achieved initial results. Geothermal energy also plays a significant role. Now, let's move to Chapter 2, Grain China. First of all, in China, actually, we have abundant geothermal resources. China has abundant geothermal resources, among which medium to low temperature hydrothermal resources meet the clean heating demand in northern China. 
there are two types of energy. From the slide, you could say two maps of China. In the first one on the left, you could say the shallow geothermal energy is mainly located in southern part of northeast China, North China, Yangtze Huaihe River Basin, and Sichuan Basin. And uh, the recoverable shallow geothermal resources in 336 cities equals to 0 0.5 billion TOE. And on the other hand, about hydrothermal energy, medium to low temperature geothermal resources. Um, there is uh, 1.3 billion TOE each year under the condition of a re-injection, which is uh, mainly located in north, and north central and a western part of China. And under the high temperature, the geothermal resources, its annual recoverable reserve in southwestern China is equivalent to 12 million TOE. The potential of power generation capacity reaches up to 7,120 megawatt. China has used geothermal resources for more than 2,000 years. And it can be traced back to pre Qin period. In the earliest period of time, which approximately uh, in the year BC 221 in Qin Dynasty, um, discovered in Xi'an in Tang Dynasty, the Huaqing Hot Spring, which is also really famous uh, in China and also in the world. Another one is in the year 1271 in Yuan Dynasty, in the the location of a name of Xiaotangshan, which is in the northern part of Beijing, which is also famous for the hot spring. Okay, and besides the long history of geothermal development, we could say in the modern years, especially in after the 1950s. In the 1950s, China began to use hot spring on a large scale. And China began to study geothermal power. When it came to the early 1970s, geothermal power stations such as Guangdong, Fengchun, Hunan Ashtsup, and the Tibet Yangbajing were established nationwide. And in the 1990s, Beijing, Tianjin, Xianyang, and Baoding began to develop geothermal heating projects on the large scale. Now, when it uh, enters the 21st century, China's geothermal energy has been widely used in space heating, cooling, agricultural, and greenhouse, and so on, in different uh, areas of uh, industries. OK, um, besides about the history of geothermal development, and um, in terms of the geothermal utilization in China also develops very rapidly. Now, first of all, China's thermal development status quo. China has been ranked first in the world by direct use of geothermal energy for many years. At present, space heating is the most important way to directly use geothermal energy. And from this slide, you could say uh, the Chinese, uh, Chinese map. And uh, like what I mentioned before, um, in the northern part of China, uh, those areas, people uh, use uh, geothermal energy uh, in, on a wide scale. So driven by policies and the market demand, China's geothermal space heating scale has rapidly developed. The total investment continues to rise. The unit cost continues to decline. The economics of geothermal projects continue to improve. And the geothermal space heating also has achieved um, a lot. Take an example, really typical, Xiong'an. Xiong'an has built a global model of high-quality geothermal development. Xiong'an has a 
richest geothermal resources and the best utilization conditions in eastern China. Xiong'an County was the first zero emission city in China. Xiong'an County model can be repl replicated and experience can be promoted. Xiong'an Citizen Service Center, nearly 100,000 square meter, utilizes geothermal space heating. In the future, Geothermal Plus will be conducted in the Rondon area. Last year, in 2019, China's geothermal space heating and cooling area will reach 150 million square meter, equivalent to installed capacity of 14 gigawatt, with an annual utilization of 90,650 trillion joule. Well, so in the following places, you could find the rapid development of geothermal space heating. Through vigorous development of geothermal space heating, coal-fired heating has been continuously replaced, and more than 20 zero emission cities have been built. China's sky is bluer, water is clearer, haze is less, and the people's lives are better. The heat pump has stood out as another uh, advancing developing engine. As of 2019, the area of heat pump applied in China has reached 500 million square meter. Its installed capacity reaches 26 gigawatt, and the total annual utilization is 246,212 trillion joule. Now look at here four typical places. First one is Jiangbei New District, Nanjing, Jiangsu Province, in the eastern uh, China. An expo in Beijing last year also attracted the world attention using Geothermal Plus water storage and energy uh, peaking shipping. And the third one, Liangjiang New District in Chongqing. And Xiangjiang New District, Changsha in Hunan Province. Okay, now let's move on to this part about geothermal uh, power generation continues to develop. Yangbajing Geothermal Power Plant, officially put into operation in 1977, with an installed capacity of a 27.80 megawatt is China's first experimental geothermal power station. Yangyi Geothermal Power Plant, successfully connected to the grid and a generation in 2018, with an installed capacity of 16 megawatt. It is the first geothermal power generation project in China to achieve 100% re-injection and it is the highest altitude geothermal power plant in the world. See, in 2019, China installed a capacity of geothermal power generation reaches up to 49.1 megawatt. The very energy has been applied into different um, uh, industries, like uh, agricultural development. So, the geothermal agricultural continuous innovation has advanced the agricultural um, industry uh, moving forward on a large scale. The modern agricultural incubation project in the Yellow River Delta in Shandong province, the application of hydrothermal cascade technology provides space heating for flowers and vegetables in winter with a total heating area of 96,000 uh, square meter and an equivalent to 3,000 TOE. In 2019, the geothermal greenhouses in China has an installed capacity of 346 megawatt and an annual energy use of 4,260 trillion joy, which is an important way to directly use geothermal in China. 
and also hot spring as well know hot spring is beneficial for human health so like in Beijing uh, Xiao Tangshan geothermal hot spring Xiao Tangshan in the northern part of Beijing is famous for the hot spring in China with a history of more than a thousand five hundred years the geothermal resources are excellent and the hot spring water is rich in minerals which are beneficial to human health the area is 870,000 square meters the hot spring production rate is 12,000 cubic meter a day equivalent to 22 megawatt of geothermal energy in 2019 China's geothermal buffing and swimming reaches 5,747 megawatt. The annual energy utilization is 86,993 trillion drill. The rapid development of uh, geothermal energy has been attributed to the high invest in the R&D, research and development. Though in the past years, in the field of renewable energy, and hydrogen technology, there are many projects being conducted by many new energy companies. The first one, the project the technology and equipment of sandstone geothermal re reservoir efficiency production and reinjection enhancing. This project is being conducted by Sanopac Star Company and also research on key scientific issues of utilization HDR by Jilin University. And comprehensive evaluation technology of enhanced production and utilization of deep carbonate geothermal reservoir jointly conducted by the Institute of Hydro Hydrogeology and Environment Geology, China Geological Survey, Ministry of Natural Resources of China. So over the past years, not only invested by the country, by the government, and some new energy companies also um, paid close attention, invested a lot to advance the development of geothermal energy. Okay, and here HDR technology progresses smoothly. In 2017, GR1 well in the Gonghe Qinghai Basin drilled into hot dry granite attaining the highest temperature of 200 degrees centigrade at the depth of 3,705 meters achieving a breakthrough in the exploration of HDR in China. The China Geological Survey Qinghai Province and Sanopak jointly launched the technology tough battle on the exploration and experimental development of HDR resources in the Gonghe Basin, Qinghai. According to the plan, Chinese first EGS demonstration project will be built to achieve experimental power generation during, during the years between 2019 and 2021. Sanopac successfully completed all the GR1 well construction tasks from walkover to fracturing last year and achieved zero breakthrough fracturing construction, which has accumulated valuable experience for the subsequent demonstration project construction. At present, the construction of the demonstration project is progressing smoothly. The injection well GH01 has been successfully completed in fracturing test. The GH02 and GH03 is drilling, is being under construction. All right, now here are some uh, geothermal projects which are being conducted at home and abroad. To China, in 2006, Sanopak and an Icelandic company jointly established a venture company. Since its establishment 14 years ago, the geothermal development project 
has expanded from a city in Xianyang to four provinces in northern China, hitting capacity of more than 42 million square kilometers, which is equal to 2,500 megawatts, become a leading geothermal company. To the world, China has established business relationship with some international companies. Curry Petroleum Company Limited of China and the National Electric Power Company of Ethiopia, and Sanopac Oil Service and GCLND Company, CNNC and CNPC also signed a cooperation agreement in Kenya. Now, about the introduction of international geothermal equipment. Sanopac geothermal stations contain heat pumps from U.S. York, U.S. Trayon, U.S. Michael Kelly Clement, heat exchanger from Alpha Lavo, water pump from Danish ground force, construction of a 16 megawatt use of Allmart ORC geothermal generating unit in the first phase of the Tibet Yangyi geothermal power stations. We also focus on the technical exchange. China technology exchanges with the international geothermal have become increasingly active. A number of technology research and development centers have successfully landed. Academic conferences have been successfully held. And in 2019, Sano Atlantic Geothermal Training Program was officially established. In the future, the Chinese branch will conduct systematic, professional, and international geothermal training based on China and face Asia, and promote the high quality development of the Asian geothermal industry. The Chinese branch will also cooperate with the China University of Petroleum based in Beijing to carry out a geothermal postgraduate training. Um, for luckily, China will become the next hosting country in 2023. Since the moment we won the chance to host this international grand conference, we have been trying to be fully ready or prepared for this conference. Now, the next chapter, I will introduce you about the preparations we have made until now. First of all, about WGC. Now, from the, the very first year in 1990 to 2023, it is acknowledged that WGC 2023 will be held in China. WGC conference is finally coming to the land of China. Chinese geothermal people are very excited and are looking forward to it. So, first of all, please accept my warm welcome to China and Beijing. In order to show our hospitality on the state level um, in China, our Director of National Energy Administration, Mr. Zhang Jinhua, personally sent a welcome letter on behalf of Chinese government to welcome WJC host in China. And also Chinese people are opening our arms to the guests from around the world. The National Geothermal Energy Center of China united with other four Chinese geothermal signed cooperation agreement and established the, the WGC 2023 Organizing Committee. The Chinese geothermal organizations, enterprises, individuals were also joining the Organizing Committee to jointly prepare WGC 2023. And also, WGC 2023 Organizing Committee has received support from many Chinese geothermal enterprises, associations, 
academic institutions. They unanimously welcomed guests from all over the world to come to China to experience the vigorous development of geothermal energy, communicate and discuss cooperation with each other. This WGC 2023 is host in Beijing, the capital of China. So I would like to introduce you about Beijing. Beijing has a splendid culture and an insightful history. Beijing is one of the ancient capitals of China. It has 3,000 years of history as a city and more than 800 years of history as a capital. Beijing has seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites and 7,309 cultural relics and historic sites, attracting countless tourists worldwide every day. When you come to Beijing, you have many chances to visit these splendid places, fascinating places, like Forbidden City, try the, the roast duck, and enjoy the Peking Opera, and also pay a visit to the Great Wall. And also, Beijing not only is a rich in history and culture, Beijing is also a geothermal utilization capital. In 2019, Beijing's heat pump, geothermal heating, and a cooling area is about 56 million square meter. And a geothermal space heating and a cooling area is about 3.4 million square meters totaling 3,600 megawatt. Geothermal energy is increasingly used in major construction projects. Fully reflecting the public trust in geothermal technology and the recognition of the low carbon development methods. From the following pictures, you could find some typical and a landmark uh, buildings in Beijing. First one is the bird nest, which hosts uh, 2008 Olympic Games. And the second one is our new international airport, which is the largest one in the world. And also in Beijing, we also enjoy very convenient, the, trans the modes of transportation. Beijing has two international airports, the passenger throughput, of Beijing Capital International Airport exceeded 100.98 million person times, which ranks the second in the world. The flight routes cover five continents and it can reach 53 countries and 106 cities. Beijing received 3.398 million foreign tourists in 2019. Beijing Daxing International Airport was put into operation. The passenger throughput is expected to be 72 million. The airport also utilizes geothermal energy and other renewable energy. Besides the, the air transportation, Beijing also has five high-speed railway stations. The speed of a high-speed rail can exceed 300 km per hour. China has over 500 high-speed rail stations, and Beijing has five high-speed rail stations. So when you come to Beijing, you can reach about 130 cities, around 1,200 in Beijing in half a day. Beijing also has a well-connected subway. It's really the city public transportation, really convenient. So the Beijing's public transport network extends in all directions, including 90 subway lines, with 574 kilometers of operating mileage and 345 stations. It takes only 30 minutes to the Capital International Airport and 90 minutes to Daxing International Airport. Well, not only do we have convenient transportation, and uh, the time hosting WGC 2023 is also the best time in April. 
WGC 2023 will be held in Beijing in April, from 17th April to 21st April. The alternative schedule is from 24th April to 28th April. So during this period of time, the daytime temperature is about 20 degrees centigrade, and also the sunshine duration is more than 14 hours, which is really comfortable. And also, I'd like to show you a conference centers. CNCC is one of the largest conference centers in China. So this time, we will host WGC 2023 in this splendid conference center. This conference center has over 100 meeting rooms of various sizes, covering an area of 270,000 square meter. The total area of the exhibition area is 40,000 square meters, fully equipped with the most advanced audio vero facilities. Look at the first one, the plenary hall, the largest one, with the area reaching up to 6,400, can hold 5,700 one time. And also, the location of the conference center is another prime choice. The CNCC is located in the heart of the Olympic commercial circle, adjacent to the green area of 1,135 hectares of Olympic Forest Park, which is a um, commercial complex, including a shopping center and famous Olympic Stadium and also not a far from the two international airports. And uh, also, about the hospitality, we have superior integrated facilities. CNCC Grand Hotel is an international standard hotel with 420 rooms. CNCC Group has nine hotels with excellent locations. There are four luxury hotels four five-star hotels and three four-star hotels and more than 10 three-star hotels within two kilometers of the CNCC. Totally over 5,000 rooms and the prices range from $60 to $300, which can totally meet your needs. And also about this professional exhibition platform, the worldwide have high degree of geothermal power. The China's geothermal direct utilization has developed rapidly. And there is a clear cooperation space between the world and China's geothermal energy development. The design, the design of booths and comfortable rest spaces will provide efficient publicity and unlimited cooperation opportunities for international geothermal business development. In 2023, welcome partners from all over the world to participate in exhibition to enjoy geothermal development opportunities. Whenever you come to China, trying the local food is a must. So in Beijing, it, you can also try various types of uh, delicious foods. And also, the foods are really authentic. So about authentic Chinese foods. Chinese food has a diverse flavors. You will taste the most authentic Chinese cuisine in Beijing. And besides the foods, it, you, you could have many chances to appreciate the diverse culture, fine art in China. Fine art performances with the Chinese cultural characteristics. The performances such as speaking opera are Chinese cultural treasures. At the opening and the closing ceremony of the conference, we will provide Chinese cultural performances to make you immersed in Chinese culture. And uh, besides the food and the, the cultural experience, we also arrange field trips that reflect the history and the culture of China's geothermal development. The first one, the geothermal tour in Beijing and its surrounding area. 
Though Beijing is a world-famous city with a rich culture and a long history, it has many splendid landscapes and a rich cultural heritage. So you could have a chance to visit Xiong'an New Area, where you can stay in Royal Hot Springs in Beijing, and also you can visit a forbidden city in the downtown center of Beijing. The route to Xi'an in Shanxi province. Xi'an is one of the ancient capitals of China and an unimportant birthplace of the Chinese civilization and a starting point of the ancient Silk Road. So in Xi'an New Area, which, is, which was also the origin of uh, geothermal utilization in China 2,000 years ago. And uh, also, you could have a chance to visit a terracotta warrior's town, Hua Qing Palace of Tang Dynasty, the hot spring of a queen of the Tang Dynasty. And the Route 3, the tour of central China, geothermal, and origins of Chinese characters. This route is mainly in Henan Province. Henan Province is the origin of a Chinese civilization, the birthplace of Chinese characters, and the dragon totems. So in Henan, uh, you can visit carbonate geothermal resources utilization. And also there, you can visit many different kinds of museums. You could see the Chinese first dragon, the birthplace of uh, China's dragon totems. You can have a look at uh, the oracle, the origin of Chinese characters. And a route for geothermal development in the cradle of Confucianism in Shandong province. Shandong province is the birthplace of a Confucian culture. In Shandong province, geothermal aquaculture and a greenhouse has also developed very rapidly. In Jinan, the provincial capital in Shandong province, Baotu Spring, a continuous self-spraying hot spring, has attracted tourists every year. And also, you can visit a Confucius temple and a Confucius family mansion, where you can truly experience the Confucian culture. The Route 5, Geothermal Activity and a Utilization Tour in Western Sichuan Plateau. Now there, you can see uh, China's national treasure, Giant Panda. Though the Western Sichuan Plateau is located in the Himalayan geothermal region, where the most intense geothermal activities occur in China. Tsopugo Hot Spring is the largest and most exotic geothermal landscape in Tibetan areas. Hai Logo, where you could experience hot springs out of the foot of a snow mountain. The Route 6, the shallow geothermal in China, in Shanghai. Shanghai is a modern city with a blending of Eastern and Western cultures. Shanghai World Expo Access green air conditioning systems has also attracted the world attention. And the Nanjing in Jiangsu province, the heat pump technology, heating and cooling also develops very fast. Now, in this route, you could visit Shanghai World Expo Axis and the Jiangbei New Area in Nanjing and also a romantic landscape in Hangzhou, West Lake. There is an obvious cooperation chance and a complementary space between China and the world in the development of geothermal industry. Welcome to China to share development opportunities. China has a profound history and a culture, beautiful mountains and rivers, and convenient people's lives. Welcome to China to experience personally. Beijing has fully equipped conference facilities, open and free academic environment. Welcome to China to communicate and exchange great ideas. In 2023, we will carefully prepare a splendid WGC for the world. Welcome you all to come to Beijing to participate in the grand meeting together.